after I think what was in many ways um, not just a successful year, but a tremendously successful one with respect to what our team was able to do collectively, um, what a, a number of individual players accomplished and, you know, the recognition that they received for those accomplishments. Um, you know, right now, you, my heart really goes out to them, um, knowing the, not just the work that, that they put in, which was, you know, substantial, um, and even more so given the circumstances of the season, just the, the, the investment that they made, both physically and mentally, um, how passionate they were. You know, it's, it's difficult to see, you know, the season end on um, the note that it did in the way that it did. And, you know, I just, um, I feel lucky, um, blessed to have an opportunity to coach a group of men that, um, you know, of the, the level of character and, and also um, commitment that, that they had to our group and um, to the organization. And, you know, I feel, I feel the same way, you know, about our fans. And, you know, to be able to, to feel support um, from our fans at a time when, you know, not only were they, you know, not allowed in the building or, or very few, but as the, you know, the crescendo of the season hit, the, really the, the support and the, and the passion that you felt from them um, during a playoff series. And, you know, I, again, I, I wish we would have had a different ending that we'd be, be able to continue to keep playing, um, you know, additionally because of, you know, what they gave us and just, you know, appreciative of all of those things from not only the, the, the fans, the players, um, but also the organization um, for the opportunity that we have. Okay, thank you, Coach. We'll move into questions now. The first question will be from Tony Jones, The Athletic. Uh, Coach, now that you, you um, this might be the wrong question. I don't want to say now that you've had some time to digest it uh, because you guys haven't really had time. But, you know, if, if you could, um, think back to, um, you know, the middle of the series towards the end of the series. Um, was there anything that could have been done that could have um, uh, elicited a, a different outcome? And what do you guys have to do to take that next step from, you know, being a second round team to, to, to going further? Well, I, I think, you know, there's always things that you feel like you, you want to be able to do better. And, you know, part of that, as you said, Tony, is, is having a chance to, to really go back and, and study the film, you know, and, and see the details. Um, there are certain things that, that over the course of the season um, that you try to anticipate, um, you know, on, on many levels, you know, and, you know, e even whether it's before the game in terms of a plan, or having adjustments, you know, to that plan. You know, there, there were a lot of things that, that we tried to do um, at timeouts um, throughout the course of the game, whether it be, you know, playing zone, changing matchups, you know, changing rotations. And, you know, in the end, you know, that's something that, that we'll study again and, and look at because the, the reality is we, we weren't able to, to get it done and to execute in those situations. So, again, that's, you know, something that, I think we you know, obviously not only take seriously, but pride ourselves in as a coaching staff, the work that, that we put in to ultimately put our players in, in positions where they can be successful. And, you know, that wasn't the case last night. Sarah Todd, Deseret News. I guess this is kind of piggybacking off of that. Uh, we, you know, we talked to a few of the guys and they said that you know, there, there was nothing wrong with the game plan. It was just that they didn't execute. I'm, I'm sure the answer is, you know, somewhere probably in the middle, but where do you fall on that? Do you, do you feel like that there were things that you could have done differently? I think all of us, you know, would agree when, when you don't get the outcome that, that you want, um, you know, you, you, you reflect on it and, 
you know, I, in the moment, as I said, I haven't had a chance to, to really to study it. You know, you're just left with the, the emotion, you know, of the game, particularly the swing that, that, that occurred in the game. But I, I just have, I have belief in our players. Um, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm grateful to, to have an opportunity to, to coach these guys. And, you know, last night was um, an outlier from a shooting standpoint. And, you know, you hope that over the course of the series, you, you can weather one of those games. Um, but that doesn't mean you don't reflect on, on everything that's associated with it and, and try to try to do better. And, and as I said, I, I think there are certain things that, that we as a staff and, and our players, you know, try to anticipate during the course of the year. Um, whether it's something like being able to play more zone, which is something that, that we looked to last night and as one example, but we'll continue to try to, you know, to dig into those things. And as I said, as a staff, try to, you know, to help put our players in a position where they have a chance to be successful. Andy Larson, Salt Lake Tribune. And feel free to quibble with me on this, but I think kind of looking at the playoffs over the last few years, one of the real assets for these teams that have won is, versatility is being able to play in multiple different ways. And um, I, I guess I'm wondering is, do you feel like you have the setup, the roster, the, you know, do you have the ability to be versatile in the way you play, or do you feel like it's, uh, you know, your, your best way of playing is, is maybe so much better than the other styles of playing that it's, it's just kind of, uh, and, and by that, I mean, you know, kind of pick and roll with Rudy and, and moving the ball getting threes, and then obviously kind of playing the drop big defensive style. Well, I, you know, it's hard to argue with the success that, you know, that, that we had this year. Um, you know, I, I think every year, you know, there's conversations that take place about how to improve the team. Um, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm, I feel lucky to, to have a chance to coach the group that we have. And those are always things every year that, you know, that we all look to do that, you know, I sit down with with management, with Dennis, Justin, everybody puts their heads together and tries to figure out ways that we can improve. And, you know, this year is no different than that. So, you know, ultimately for me, you know, my focus is is on the group and, and what I can do, you know, when they're on the court to, you know, to maximize those guys and in terms of, you know, what we can do and how we can play. David James, KUTV. Quinn, I'm curious, uh, uh, at both ends of the floor, offensively, it seems like the, the teams that have been knocking you out of the playoffs over the last five years largely have been teams that switch quite a bit. What do you think can be done to uh, attack those more effectively? And defensively, is just getting guys who can stay in front of the ball, um, is that the biggest challenge for the group? Well, I think, you know, to, to begin with the, the offensive side of the game, I think that's one of the things that made last night um, you know, after the court, you know, after the game that, that kind of stung so much is because we, we did see, uh, the way that we were able to attack, you know, not having Mike for, um, you know, for the early part of the series up until last game, you know, Donovan being, um, in the position he was in, you know, playing through an injury, uh, in spite of that, you know, what we did in the first half, I, I think, you know, showed our ability, you know, to attack in, in those situations. And um, obviously we didn't, we didn't get it done in, in the second half with a 47 point second half. And I can't remember what we scored exactly in the first half, 60 something. Um, so, you know, in many respects, if, if we have to keep scoring, um, that's what we, we need to do. We weren't able to do that. Um, you know, those two guys, when they're getting in, um, in the interior and when we're breaking the paint and creating mismatch opportunities on closeouts, getting on the offensive boards. Those are, those are things that, that, that we did do and we're successful doing. And again, you know, want to continue to do more consistently, um, you know, defensively, like I said previously, I, I have, you know, great, great respect, admiration and belief in, in our guys and, you know, difficult night last night, um, particularly given whether it's Terrence Mann, you know, having a career night, 
you know, he, he made shots and, and, you know, we, we started to, to rotate to him. We played zone. We did a lot of things, but um, my focus is on really what I can do, you know, to try to help, help those guys. And, you know, I have tremendous belief in, in who they are and um, how much passion they put into it and how hard they work. Eric Walden, Salt Lake Tribune. Hey Quinn, obviously, you know, these, these components are interconnected, but, how soon are you kind of able to turn the page from kind of, you know, re-examining kind of the, the granular details of what went wrong in every game or series and, and kind of turn towards, you know, bigger picture, this is what we need to do next to take that next step kind of thing? Well, I, I think those things are, are related, Eric. Um, you know, obviously it, it, it's hard to, to turn the page. Um, you know, at the end of the season, when you have such a mix of emotions, um, you want to, you know, to feel the the pride that you have in the group and the success that they've had. And, and then anytime you're you're one of the, you know, the 29 teams that, that, that doesn't win it, you, you feel the sting of that no matter, you know, when your season ends or in, in what fashion. So, you know, trying to, to emotionally, um, you know, recover from that. Um, is a challenge. I think a challenge for our players. I know the investment that, that we make and that I make to, you know, to try to give us a chance to be successful. Um, you know, the, the loss itself is, you know, you internalize it and you internalize it, you know, even more when you watch it and you think about how, you know, what you could do to make it different. And, you know, that, that process, um, you know, is an annual one, um, but in this case, it's it's one that I, th I think for all of us. And you know, you you felt, you know, you felt what this team, you know, was capable of doing. It was doing, and then you know, in the end, we weren't able to to get it done for you know a variety of reasons. And you know, once you go through that, and, and some of the emotion subsides, I think then um, you can turn your attention to you know, to some of the conclusions that you come to and, you know, work hard in, in the off season to address them. And, you know, I think this year in particular, it's, it's been a, it's been a long road, you know, since last March and what our group has been able to accomplish, um, you know, I, I think is really, really unique. And I think the, the enthusiasm and emotion that, that we felt you know, in the first half in particular, um, and then compared to the way the second half went, makes this, you know, even more difficult to, to, to accept and process, but that's, that's the reality uh, of where we are. And that's the way we'll go about it. And, you know, again, like every off season, you know, we look for ways to, to get better and this one will be no different. Ben Anderson, kslsports.com. And uh, the big question for the team, the off season, or one of the big questions will be Mike Conley's future. Can you reflect on your two years with him and what he's meant for you and your team and, and what he does going, maybe, you know, not what he does going forward, but what he would mean going forward? Well, I mean, I, I've talked about Mike, you know, over the course of his time here and in, in all kinds of different contexts and ways and, you know, the, the thing that that's consistent through every question I've asked about Mike is, you know, for me, you know, on a personal level, as much as anything, the appreciation that I have for him. Um, not only is he a great player, but he's one of the best human beings that, that you know, I've ever had an opportunity to be with on a daily, daily basis. And to see his work, uh, to see his leadership, to see his play, um, he's someone that, that changes our team, you know, not just the way that um, he's able to, you know, to impact the game, getting in the lane, passing the ball, making shots. There's so many things that, that he does um, that, are, that are unique and his value to us. And, you know, even to me, there's guys you, there's guys you lean on. And I know there was parts of this year where, um, you know, he wasn't able to, to contribute. And even the other night, you know, for him to come back and, 
and take a shot at, at playing last night. And like Donovan, you know, obviously not a hundred percent and, you know, playing through, you know, that discomfort, pain, injury, um, you know, he's obviously um, someone that his competitiveness and commitment to the team is, is also unique. And as I said, I, you know, there's no one um, that has more appreciation for what he gives, who he is, you know, it's, it's unique to have a guy and to feel that connected to him in, in a short period of time. And I have, you know, a lot of satisfaction personally in, in the way that, that he's been able to play on the court and the level that he's been able to play. The fact that he was an all-star this year and not it was an all-star, he, he had one of the best seasons of his career, which was finally recognized him, you know, in selection to the all-star game. So he's obviously someone that, that's special to me. And I, I think is someone you know, that, that everybody on our team could articulate what, what I just was asked and, and commented on in a similar fashion. He's just someone that's appreciated throughout our group, our organization. And, uh, you know, a guy that you, you just like being with every day. Uh, last question will be a follow-up from Sarah Todd, Deseret News. Quinn, with um, Olympic and international competition coming up, I mean, obviously, like on a personal level, I'm sure that you're, you're happy for guys to go and play. But from a coaching perspective, with another shortened offseason coming up, are you, are you worried about some of those guys being able to come back and, and be ready to go for a, an 82 game season? Well, that, that, to be honest, Sarah, that's, that's not something that, that I've thought about right, right now in the short term that I guess that the, the only thing I would add is that, you know, the guys that we have that, that play on their national teams, you know, it's really something that, that they take great personal pride in. And as a result, you know, I, I'm tuned in um, to all of them. I know how important it is to them. And more than anything, you want to wish them luck. And, um, you know, because I, I do know how passionate they are. Um, the same way they're, you know, they're incredibly passionate about the work that you know, that they put in with, with, with us and the jazz during the majority of, um, you know, their playing career. And um, they're equally committed to the jazz and in, in the short run in those moments, you know, have their focus there and, and take great pride in, in what they do and how they represent their, um, you know, their specific and individual countries. Okay. Hey, uh, uh, thanks uh, to everybody. Um, before we get started, as you guys know, I usually like uh, to make a little bit of an opening statement, a lot of acknowledgments uh, to start. So please bear with me. I think you'll understand um, under the circumstance. Really, we uh, <clears throat> want to start out uh, uh, by uh, remembering Jerry Sloan, uh, Doug Burrell, uh, and Mark Eaton. Um, they embodied uh, what our organization uh, stood for and uh, were legends and, and we we miss them. Um, next, uh, congratulations uh, to the Clivers. Uh, they played a, a fantastic series and uh, beat us fair and square, overcame significant adversity. Uh, and so their performance was was admirable. Um, uh, and then the last thing uh, that we would say to each of you guys, as we always do, want to thank you guys as being the median to our fans. Um, uh, you guys have been more than fair to us. Uh, we recognize the sacrifices uh, that you made uh, during this COVID window. Um, Andy, your articles uh, on COVID made us all more educated and aware. So uh, thanks for, for all of you as much as anything. So Justin, I don't know if you have anything. Uh, just to echo what Dennis has said, especially in remembering some of our legends with Mark, Jerry, and Doug. Um, obviously, a lot of circumstances going into this year and 
a lot of challenges for all of us, uh, including you guys in the media. Thank you very much for your work, uh, but I do echo Dennis's comments. And we're, we're open for questions. All right, we'll go ahead and get started with Eric Walden, Salt Lake Tribune. Hey guys, thanks uh, to both of you for taking the time. We appreciate it. Um, this is a question for either or both of you. Um, just kind of in the aftermath of how, you know, game six went and, and the series went, I guess, how do you <laughs> proceed in terms of balancing, you know, reaction to what happened versus maybe overreacting to it? Um, I guess, how much change do you feel like is, is necessary to address specific roster construction concerns going forward? Yeah, I, I, Eric, I, I think you hit a key point. Um, obviously, you know, you don't want to equate a, a series death to, or, or a series loss to a death, but there are certainly, you know, stages of griefs and postmortems and, and, and really as much as anything, while uh, there, there's no question, there's collective disappointment, hurt. Um, there's also uh, locker room last night, bus, plane, getting together this morning. There's a lot of gratitude. So I think what you said is really key. Um, obviously, we err towards continuity. I think that served us really well uh, this year, especially with shortened off seasons. And <clears throat> part of the program that we built is um, having a coaching staff, a development staff, a health performance staff that really believes in players that are inherently positive. And it's been a similar, Eric, here is um, my years in San Antonio and when we had more veteran teams in Houston, we kind of have a second, third year phenomenon where guys get better um, in their second and third years. Uh, there's a lot of evidence uh, to that. And we obviously play a specific style. And the fact that our coaches are so positive with our guys. So I think um, we, you know, the natural bent is uh, grass isn't always greener. And then, and then obviously we have to go through draft, free agency, you know, de facto trade season, when, you know, in both of those draft and free agency seasons and see what's available to us, um, see what's not, and, and then make those decisions. But it's not lost on us, the, the historic season that we had. And um, you, you certainly have to evaluate uh, the playoffs. I think we have to evaluate the playoffs under the lens of, you know, um, we wore down physically. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I think we'll take a collective deep breath. Justin and I, the management scouting team, uh, are quickly heading to Chicago uh, tomorrow um, to start working on draft preparations in particular. So uh, I know that's a long-winded answer. I don't know if I got everything that you're looking for there, but that's at least where I'm at at this point in time. Justin? Just what Dennis had said is in terms of a collective deep breath, and we've got a, a period of time here. Um, also, you know, with Ryan uh, and his first year of ownership to go through this off-season process. So we need to get with him and give him a download and, and get everybody, you know, get all of their thoughts after after a few days here. And then, you know, while we're, we're constantly in the front office, we're continuing to plan for the draft and free agency, regardless of when or if we get eliminated, but uh, getting everybody else after they've had a little bit of a break here to talk and then what's next. Okay, next up, Tony Jones, The Athletic. Um, this is for, for both Justin and Dennis. Um, you know, does the building of a, a NBA contender is often not linear, but um, it's often one of where you guys have to take steps. You know, there are a lot of champion, few champions have gone from, you know, one to a hundred, so to speak. So how do you, you guys went, you guys made a leap from going from a good regular season team to being a great regular season team. And you're, you're a good playoff team, but how do you make that leap from being now a good playoff team to being a great playoff team? 
Justin, why don't you, you start? Thanks, Tony. It's good to see your face, part of it anyway. Um, I th there we go. It's, it's a good question, Tony. I think, you know, it, it's no team, you know, evolves at the same pace or style. It's a you know combination of a bunch of different factors. And what we try to do is put the best players, coaches, health performance staff in place and have them go out. And then there's a large part of things that may not be in our control or things that we have to continually learn about ourselves and, and adjust to, uh, which is what off seasons are for and, and sometimes in the in season. So you may not love the answer, Tony, but um, the blueprint of trying to go from good to great, as we've talked about before, before is hard and complicated. Um, doesn't mean it, 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 but that's what we strive for. And based on what opportunities come in off seasons and uh, opportunities to, to try and get better, because that's the goal and eventually be the last team standing. Part of that's also good fortune and a unique year with COVID and health and largely remain healthy for, you know, not as an excuse, but these are things that have to go, you have to have some good fortune too. Um, you know, for a large part of the six, seven months, we had been healthy and it caught up to us at the end and needed to perform and we didn't get it done. So that will go into the calculation as we, you know, do our download for, for what happened, all the good and the, things to improve on this season? Yeah, I think as much as anything, uh, Tony, just good, honest, sober uh, assessments that, you know, we'll keep internal. As you guys know, um, here we protect players, protect coaches, protect staff. It's just been a long jazz tradition. And, and so, um, but, you know, try to be uh, internally uh, just brutally honest uh, where uh, we might have fallen short, had opportunities, didn't take advantage of them, didn't have opportunities. Why didn't we have those opportunities? Um, so I, <clears throat> we, we do a, a fairly comprehensive review from A to Z. Um, luckily, uh, Ryan has wanted to continue that process that was an edict uh, by the Millers uh, when I got here nine years ago. So um, I think that's relatively one of our strengths is, is, you know, we're honest with, with ourselves and, you know, sometimes the adjustments uh, can be internal and rather subtle. A few things that is an example that Quinn uh, tactically did uh, on the break um, are from an offensive rebounding standpoint, and, um, internal improvement, um, you know, just 0.2% here, 1% there. Um, and then there, there's obviously free agency draft, uh, trade things that we, we need to analyze. And we take verbatim notes, Tony, on, on every meeting. So uh, it gives us a chance to honestly – uh, look at ourselves and, um, you know, uh, evaluate, uh, you know, what we did uh, well, what we got lucky on, what we did poorly. And we'll, we'll do that um, as always in a, in a confidential way, but rest assured in a comprehensive way as well. Next up, Sarah Todd, Desert News. Hey guys, um, this this will be for both of you and sort of a two part question. As you said, injuries were uh, a huge part of how this series and season ended uh, with both Donovan and Mike going through stuff. Do you think that one that gave you an opportunity to you know properly evaluate and distinguish specific things that you'll be able to identify going forward that you're going to need? And then two, you know, you guys have said in the past, you know, that you were going to go after shooters and you went and did that a couple of years ago. And then now heading into this season, are there things that you have identified that you need to go after in this offseason? Yeah, sir. Both of them terrific questions. And I, it actually leads me into something that I wrote down and it's really important to say. One, we really appreciate Mike Conley uh, attempting to play. Uh, last night, 
uh, as he mentioned, uh, there was some, you know, just some struggles on return to play. And we tried to, as you guys know, our health performance staff is, uh, we never from an ownership management coaching level ever put any pressure on a guy that's got to play. Um, I saw as an example, you know, Pop do it several times where in playoff series um, that the players weren't going to play, even if it was at the detriment of the result. And obviously, we treated Mike with great patience, care, kid gloves. And then ultimately, it is, as most of you know, the players uh, participate kind of in the return to play process. And he really wanted to play given uh, the stakes. And as much as anything, as you, all of you know, he's first class in every way. And it was a, uh, in my opinion, a very notable and no, noble uh, attempt. Um, it really was. And then same thing for Don. Uh, Jeff Van Gundy had a, a great quote on NBA players because so much of the season is more about survival than it is necessarily winning any one game. That's why we call it last team standing. Um, Don really, his performance was heroic. The fact that he played his best when his best was needed and yet it was clear that he was suboptimal uh, was beyond remarkable. Um, it speaks to his physical talent, uh, his mental toughness, perseverance. Um, you guys saw when he landed. Um, so I, it's just, I, I, in, in some ways, it will get lost because, you know, we didn't, we didn't accomplish the goal of being the last team standing or certainly getting to the finals. But it was a, a remarkable thing to watch him go through. Uh, Memphis and the Clippers and play in, in such a dynamic way when, you know, as he stated, it's clear that he wasn't uh, 100%. So um, I think um, when you lose, you know, at, at a point in time in the, in the uh, regular season to all-star level players, um, it was notable that we were able to survive and, and somewhat thrive. Um, I, I think, Sarah, that came at a cost. Uh, Joe was a little fatigued by need, needing to handle the ball. Um, and, uh, but we were able to, you know, hang on uh, for one seed. Some of the young players played. Um, some had good minutes. Um, Mieoni, as an example, had an excellent defensive rating. Um, and could be one of the better uh, wing defenders in the league. He was more situational this year uh, because, as Justin mentioned earlier, uh, we were so healthy and relatively nine deep. If you're saying Mia is our 10th guy being situational. Um, and then, yeah, so there's always uh, evaluations on adding shooting, right? And then at what cost? And for us, we got really fortunate because we added shooting systematically really over a three-year period, starting with when we couldn't keep up with Golden State. And then we, we were able to get a few guys better. George Niang had a terrific uh, defensive year as an example. So while you think of him as a, as a sniper, um, you go look uh, at the video, you go look at its defensive metrics, his overall value to us was really high. And when he wasn't making shots early in the season, it was more so defensively. So again, the internal improvement thing uh, going on, the second, third year phenomenon that we've had uh, with our players. And then <clears throat> you're obviously looking uh, at how we ended. Uh, I don't think you over-index and make every decision uh, based upon the Clippers going small. Um, and having um, some uh, wing athleticism, if you will. But it, it's certainly a window into playoff basketball. Things get reduced. Um, rotations get reduced. Uh, what happens? Um, and, again, uh, you put that in the context of what happened uh, with the team, what Mike was dealing with, what Don was dealing with. 
you know, what Quinn's thoughts were, you know, when the rotations shrink, those are all uh, part of the, the, the equation that you're, you're basically, Rudy Tomjanovich used to say this, and it's really true. You're basically removing the clouds, whether they're self-imposed clouds or media narratives or, uh, uh, you know, a false evaluation. Uh, and, and then trying to, once you get to the truth, trying to order the truth and the level of priority and then see what you can address. There's many times, as an example, I think I've said this a few times, some things you want to do in the draft uh, or trade or free agency and you just can't, you can't execute on them. So some of it's, you know, what's available to you as well. Um, Justin, anything you would, you would add to that? I just emphasize that the, the order of truth is part of our process of, you know, evaluating this. And Sarah, it's, you know, obviously it's less than 24 hours since the elim elimination and we can go point to, you know, to back to Tony's question of going from good to great regular season team. And obviously there's things that we need to evaluate. Um, you know, the translation into the playoffs with certain matchups after finishing the season top five in both offense and defensive efficiency. So where does that apply in a, you know, relatively short series as opposed to a 72, 82 game season and um, where the league is continuing to evolve with players and where those opportunities are. So I think it's too early to say to just make flat, hey, we need to do this. You know, a couple of years ago when we knew about the shooting part, we also saw the league moving this way and, and it was very, very clear. Um, now it's going to be a little bit more nuanced because we're closer. Um, and obviously weighing, as Dennis said, with, with injuries and circumstances and things like that and, and valuing it properly on the path go, to go forward. Here's another thing that I think would be interesting for, for all of you uh, to think about. We're going into uh, our general manager meetings on Monday in Chicago. And, and plenty of people have written about it. There's a big emphasis on, you know, we've, we've tried to protect the shooters, but the league has become so good and skilled and uh, tricking the officials on when players jump in uh, to the defensive path. And get, is the league truly going to give um, uh, the defensive some more tools to work with, you know, from that standpoint? So we're – you're, we're being made aware of what could be a rule change, but we're also, it could be just a rule emphasis. So we're trying to evaluate that. You know, I think that's one thing that all year long, we were excellent. I drove a lot of our margin. We were low foul. And then uh, there were a few times in Memphis and LA Clippers, you know, whether it be in rotation, body position, uh, hand position, we just weren't quite as disciplined. Uh, and, and so, you know, that those are things that the coaches will address and did address with the players. And then it's also something that we've got to evaluate. Um, we do a pretty good job of, of uh, the officiating process, taking that data, really spending a lot of time with the rules, trying to teach technique uh, to the rules as well. So that, that, that's a piece as well that will factor into all of our evaluations there. Next up, Andy Larson, Salt Lake Tribune. Hey, for Dennis, just um, I guess with Mike Conley's upcoming free agency, how will you approach that? Do you want them back? And, and straightforwardly, do you have enough money to resign him given that it will put you into the luxury tax to a large degree and you'll have to pay many multiples of, of what that salary would be? Yeah, yeah, it's an obvious question, Andy. Um, a few things. Uh, Justin said it earlier. Uh, this is Ryan's first season and then off season, and he's going through it like uh, we are, Andy, where, you know, there's a sense of pride and accomplishment and some historic things, whether it be the three-point shooting, first seed ever, and then the realities all, that we didn't accomplish our final goal and and obviously uh, our ownership support the transition the succession plan has been amazing amazing to watch you know Gail Greg Steve Miller Steve Starks uh, Ryan Smith 
Ryan Sweeney, Michael Cannon Brooks, now Dwayne Wade, they've really been amazing when transitions, you know, are tough. So Ryan trusted us and he made a huge financial commitment this off season that you've alluded to. And there's, there's always, you know, the next season, um, in multi-year planning, um, you know, I'm limited Andy on what I can say, you know, cause Mike now is a, a tech, uh, technically a free agent, but <clears throat> from our perspective, who he is, what he stands for, the speed, skill, experience, uh, intelligence, uh, character, uh, poise that he adds to the group. Those are all, we just pinch ourselves that we're, it's an honor uh, to have him part of the program. And then you, you guys know the deal. I can't speak to He's got to go um, vet his market. Uh, we've got to go and draft and, you know, as soon as, soon as it's legal, have uh, free agent um, conversations. And then um, Mike and his dad, who's one of his agents, uh, Stephen Human, um, acts in advisement as well. Uh, we have good relationships there. We'll have just a real honest conversation and, and see, you know, if you, can make a marriage work, but uh, couldn't be more proud of him. And, and you know, again, last night, what he attempted, um, I think it, it goes with that. I, can, I, I know I can speak with, for Ryan Smith on that one. He, he really appreciated Mike giving it a shot. And, and look, you know, both things can be true. We can be just rocked emotionally. Uh, for a lot of different reasons and yet be eminently proud that, you know, first seed, first time Mike Conley got to be an all-star, Andy, you know, when he, as you know, deserved it before, but the West is brutal. So we can, I think we can take um, some pride and solace and in, in some individual and team accomplishments, even though the ultimate goal wasn't, wasn't finished. Okay, next up, David James, KU TV. Uh, for both of you, I, I'm curious as you watch the team play, uh, how you evaluate the group's ability to just defend their man and stay in front of the guy who's got the ball in front of him. Yeah, we, we Quinn alluded to that last night, DJ. You know, no hiding from that fact that uh, we did a really good job uh, all year long with that um, some guys uh as an example mike conley up at the top of the key is easily is a little bit like howell meto and it showed up in howell's video and metrics were quite elusive um, when picks come and um the in and around the gauntlet you know superior and we were able to find that, that Mike was quite adept at that, and, you know, and a certain extent, you know, lost that, uh, those capabilities. Uh, even though people may think that he's smaller, you go look at the video, the metrics, it matched what, you know, at least I was seeing with my eyes. And then you have Royce O'Neal, uh, who I believe when it's free throw line and below, and there's strength involved, and holding a line um, is one of the better defenders in the league. Um, and then you, you go into Donovan, Donovan having capabilities, but, you know, his load offensively is so large. And he obviously didn't play, you know, six, seven weeks prior to coming back in the Memphis series. So, but there's no question. Um, there was some, there was a few angles, especially when Ty Lu decided to play. Uh, smaller and switch everything defensively, but give them more space, speed, and skill uh, out on the court. Um, it, it created some odd coverage angles for everybody, and that's one of the reasons why they uh, get to continue on to the Western Conference Finals, and, uh, and our season was ended. Is that a trend? Um, is it um, something that uh, we can mitigate. 
uh, whether it be with tactic, strategy, technique, or, you know, ultimately change in personnel. Those are the questions that we'll, you know, we'll be asking ourselves as we move to the draft combine. And we need to let Quinn and the coaches get away. Um, them and health performance, uh, it's just, it was remarkable what they did. Uh, all Really, if you think about it, when you include the bubble, the short off season, um, basically combining two seasons into one, our health performance staff got the performance staff of the year coming out of the bubble. Uh, Quinn uh, was a coach of the year candidate um, and very well uh, deserved in, in, in our opinion. Um, and so the coach's effort, the health performance effort, um, I don't mind sharing this as an example. Um, you know, we got accommodations from the league uh, and recognized that we were by far the most health or the COVID, uh, most compliant COVID team in the league, meaning testing, uh, vaccinations, uh, all the tracking devices. Um, and that's a credit to Barnett Frank and all the health performance staff. And so, you know, all those things go back into the evaluation, David, but, you know, the most honest assessment is, is there's no question when the Clippers uh, uh, went small and more skilled that our containment needed to be at a higher level. It created a trigger um, inside of which we, we gave up a lot of corner threes and that's not something that we typically do and believe in. And it, that wasn't the only thing that ended our season, but um, it certainly didn't didn't help us advance. Ben Anderson, KSL Sports uh, Dennis and Justin, you actually alluded to this a moment ago when you were talking about how you recognize the league was trending towards shooting. On the other end, for Rudy Gobert, because his defense is so integral to what you guys do scheme wise on that side of the ball. What direction is the league heading defensively and how do you make sure that he's not overwhelmed like he was last night? Yeah. So a, a, a few things. One, uh, and this is no excuse, but um, when Rudy took that fall, um, there was a pretty big contusion and he went back in the tunnel and a little bit like Mike Conley, um, Ben, a little bit uh, or a lot like Donovan. He's like, you guys are going to have to tackle me to not let me go back in. And that was admirable. Um, but his mobility was compromised. Uh, luckily, with all the testing and imaging, he's, he's going to be fine. But uh, that was real. We felt it. But you weren't going to – there was no way Quinn or me or Mike Elliott or anybody else was going to be able to hold him back from last night. And – Look, a lot of what we evaluate is what you replicate, um, what you can replicate. And Rudy's, as, as you guys know, is great at the rim. And uh, subsequently, we can be great defending uh, the three-point line, and we can defend and defend without fouling. And all those things we didn't do as well. And much of uh, what happened, you just have to credit Terrence Mann, uh, Paul George, Marcus Morris, uh, thought Reggie Jackson uh, played terrific. And, uh, you know, the Clippers caught on to uh, a scheme uh, and some matchups. And it, it, there's no question our teams were close enough that whether it be injury or foul trouble or a matchup or a scheme, you know, those things could, you know, swing a series. And, it did, you know, we, we took the first two and played really well. And then the Clippers, um, I think it's the first team ever that came back, came back from 2-0. And you guys probably know the math last night, down 25, come back. I think it's historic. So we were historically good in some ways. And then um, some history ended us. And uh, But uh, Rudy Gobert is one of the best players in the league. And we're glad to have him on our side. Brian Miller, KSL. 
Yeah, Dennis, you've mentioned Ryan Smith a few times. Um, how much or how much has his involvement changed the process for you guys? And how much more hands-on is he compared to the Millers? If you don't mind, Ryan, I'd rather stay away from comparisons. You know, it's if you if you have fair children, enough, fair enough. if you have children, it's a it's a, it's not a it's not a, a fruitful thing to do. You just love uh, every your kids at where they're at. Um, same thing. Hey, we've been I've been really lucky. Houston, San Antonio, here regime changes. Look, it's just part of the league. Um, you know, I've gone from. Randy Rigby to Steve Starks to Jim Olson as president partners, you know, and uh, all of them uh, not good men, great men, you know, but they're going to have different managerial styles. And I think, um, you know, with Ryan, he's uh, obviously young, brilliant, uh, energetic, bunch of questions. And look, he, he spent a lot of money to, acquire the franchise and luckily we still have you know the Millers involved I didn't mention them as part of the minority ownership and I think he recognizes a few things that we've done well that are fundamental and tried and true and then uh, as he gets his footing it's only natural uh, that uh, a few of his preferences inclinations uh, will 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 move us operating in, in certain ways. So uh, he's doing great. And as much as anything, we really appreciate him uh, trusting us uh, to make a few financial commitments that we need to make to make sure that we're able to retain Jordan Clarkson, bring Derek Favors back, take Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell off the market, uh, that certainty. And look, you in this league, you have to you have to pay for certainty. You have to pay for greatness. You have to pay for continuity. And Ryan did that and and, and listened. And um, from my perspective, an upper management, that's really that's all you can ask. Justin, is there anything you would add that I left out on that? You just emphasize grateful for uh, his energy and his expertise, and the Millers trusting him, and you know continuing to make huge inroads into the community and, and state just as the Millers did and in, in, in his own way. So we're grateful for him and, and all the support he's given us. Follow up from Sarah Todd. Yeah, this uh, will be for both of you or either of you, whoever wants to take it. Um, you mentioned Dennis, that the, the general manager's meeting is coming up and Obviously, we saw uh, a lot of injuries, uh, especially to a lot of high-level players this year. One, is that something that you anticipate being talked about? And then two, going off of that, um, with the Olympics coming up, does it concern you that in another shortened season that you're going to have players that are going to be taking part in, in those competitions? Um, yes. You know, <laughs> the, 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 the health performance thing, uh, we can control what we can control. Um, as an example, I, you know, some of these stats you guys might not have available to you, but I, I'll give you a few. Really, you know, Mike Elliott, the staff he's built, I think we're, since 14-15, we're first in the league and fewest foot and ankle injuries. Uh, and then, you know, what happens at Indiana uh, was no one's fault, and, and that was a tough deal for Donovan. It, re it really was a tough deal for us. And so, because it was an, an episode, um, um, I think we're, last three years, second and fewest games missed due to injury, third and dollars lost due to injury, which is a huge metric. You know, look, there's a few teams that, uh, their playoffs were wrecked for health or didn't get to the playoffs because of health. And so it's, it's a really important thing. I think uh, the league's heart uh, on this matter is really pure. You know, it, it is. There's, it, it's amazing being on board of governor calls, general manager calls, task force calls, 
you know, we've been zoomed to death. And that's why I take pride in being, you know, our, our staff being um, recognized as um, uh, the most compliant team in the league because this was a lot, guys. It was, it was, it was a lot. And you know it because, you know, you guys made sacrifices inside of COVID and your nature of your business changed. Um, you know, with that said, uh, was there, in my opinion, was there a magic number out there? that was better than 72 inside of this condensed period. I think there was, but, you know, you also, there's finances involved. And, uh, uh, you know, players, you know, want to make as much money in a short window as possible. And, and so all of that was collectively bargained. So if, if, in my opinion, if that's debated on, maximizing revenue versus player health. I, I think that's healthy. And, and, and rest assured, Sarah, those, those things are talked about, you know, intimately and debated. And, you know, by and large, every board of governor call that I've taken um, part in, you know, uh, player health is, is really paramount. And, and you, yet you're going to have disagreements, you know, Competition um, is always going to bring some level of conflict and disagreements. And for this issue, there's um, um, it's no different. You're going to have star players get hurt, and other star players are going to note it. And then the league is going to send out their PR statement, right? And then everybody debates it. And that's why you guys and us have a job. Um, but but rest assured, this is an area that we deeply, deeply study. And uh, uh, can, can you tell me the second part of the question besides the GM? Because I know I ran on there. Yeah, with, uh, with Olympic competition coming up and another shortened off season. Yeah, so we look, Houston, San Antonio here, I've been a great beneficiary of uh, the international player, the domestic player that like Donovan, that's, that's great enough to be invited to world championships and Olympics. And so I, I don't want to be hypocritical, you know, and saying, I don't want them to participate, but there's no question. We're, we're all holding our breath that nothing happens. Um, that if something does happen, that the national team appropriately uh, reports it to us, uh, we spent sent a lot of personnel out to um, the players' training sites, make sure that um, all the training specifications are being met and that the players' individual needs. Uh, I think Rudy Donovan, Joe Ingles, uh, other national team players that we've had have really appreciated extra effort because it does, it interrupts the offseason for the health performance staff. But we hope to support the player um, in that way. But yeah, there's, there's no question. There's not a, a general manager uh, or a head coach in the league that uh, can't say that he's holding his breath. And, and then there's just overall fatigue, right? And, and, but yet, if a player's healthy, um, it's been collectively bargained between the NBA, um, USA Basketball, and the FIBA agreement. And he wants to play in the Olympics. Who am I to stand in, in, in his way? You know, we want that for our guys. You just, you just hope that um, that they're not tired, and certainly that they don't have a, a traumatic injury. Last question is a follow up from Andy Larson. Hey guys, for either one of you wants to take this, but. Um, you know, I think it's fair to say over the last year, you guys kind of focused on doubling down on the way that you play and, and acquiring uh, or reacquiring guys who with size, rim protection, even shooting at the deadline. Do you regret not getting more versatility on this roster to deal with threats like the Clippers presented? And, you know, in, in that way, do you want to add more versatility to this roster in, in the offseason to come? I think we'll have to think about it, uh, Andy, I, again. You know, we, we're not going to comment on and never separate from an individual player, whether it be the player or the transaction. We win and, and lose together. But, yeah, certainly um, 
two-way players um, are very, very important to NBA clubs, and that's why they come at really high premiums. Justin, I don't know if you would add anything to that. Totally. That's, you know, it's part of the team building process, Andy. I appreciate you asking the question. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much, Dennis and Justin. We really appreciate okay. your time. Okay, you guys Thanks, have guys. a great, great weekend. Appreciate you.